What's up, guys? Part time adjunct here, Alex Louie. Always giving you the best code, uh, never making you pay for it. Now, uh, today I'm going to go over .NET Web API patch, and I want to show you how to implement a patch verb uh, on a controller. So let's get started. Let's look at the code. Suppose you have a table. Um, called customer and you have these fields here you have first name last name address created on and created by and a customer ID and I've defined this here with the columns make customer ID a primary key now what we want to do is perhaps you want to update maybe just one field or maybe just two fields because in this example, I'm using a customer table with just three fields that are may perhaps you want to update, but perhaps you may have a table that has 20 fields and you don't want to update everything. So the classic way to do this would be, and what I've seen a lot on the internet, and I've been guilty of this too, would be to either implement a post or a put, right? Um, you pass in a customer ID and then you check if the particular property is null. So, for example, if if, if I'm going to send an update for Steve, right, um, I would send the property and then I check if first name is null. If it's not, then I would update, right? Uh, if it is null, then I don't want to update. But that brings a couple of complications because what if somebody wants to null out so maybe somebody wants to null out their first name. And I'm, I'm just giving you, nobody's going to null out their first name. But uh, for instance, they may want to actually null out a particular property. Now what do you do then? Right, what do you do then? Um, you would have to kind of allow for an extra parameter that says, okay, update yes or update. So it gets, it gets very dirty, right? So the classical way, like I said, is you have a post customer function post, pass it in. So if I run this, I run that, then I'm going to do a post. Okay, so you come in here, and if I we look at our binded properties here, you would see that um, first name is not bind. I'm sorry, I have to change this. Let me just change this real quick. Okay, so I changed the um, the property to say Steve, right? And now Steve is binded, right? So if Steve is binded, then it's going to hit our condition here, and then we would just update, all right? Um, so let me just keep going with that. But the other issue that comes into play is that what if I want to set first name to null, right? Uh, I click on send and now all oh, my first name is null but then it's not going to hit my condition so I would probably have to introduce an additional property perhaps that says you know update this or something along the lines of just additional logic that would I would have to do okay which is you know it works and I've been guilty of that I mean I've done that in the past and I, I can tell you from first hand that it gets extremely extremely ugly okay so what I've done is I've actually looked at this particular solution from this website here uh, this link okay um, which these guys talk about extending patch support and this is only with uh, .NET 4.5.1 because .NET Core supports this, but uh, as I know, a lot of people aren't using .NET Core because your company is not going to take the leap, um, or you just haven't gotten to that point yet. I know some companies are started running 3.5, so that's just another story. But uh, this website actually provides the classes uh, written out on how to, you know, how to how to set it up. But it doesn't really provide a project. Um, so what I did is I took the liberty of creating a project for you guys uh, and all you have to do is just download my project and just use it as a model so um, 
so this is I'm not I'm not gonna create this on my own. So I I never like to steal I don't steal ideas. So this has been created by this these guys uh, on this site. So if you you're interested more in reading this, um, you can go to this site. So what I did was I have so I have a data layer right. So this is a simple example. I'm not really gonna structure my project this way. It's just to show you guys. Um, I have a comment folder where I list my patching classes that I'm using in this project. Uh, I'm not going to go into the explanation of each one because that again is another video <laughs> that I would have to write. So there's four classes in this project that you need to include, um, which is the abstract patch state request, which is where we. this is the main one pretty much. All our patch objects are going to inherit from this particular class and then we have a patch validator so I installed the fluent validation for for this project uh, it's a NuGet package um, and I can show you in the next video on how to validate your patches uh, which is pretty cool then we have um, and then the, the website also shows you how to validate um, if you want to take a take a good read on that um, we have a custom binding class okay uh we need this here and then we have the patch binding class so we in total we have four classes okay that are need to be used for your patching examples then under app start you're going to see the web config okay i added this parameter binding rule where i add the patch binding class uh, I, I bind it, I insert it as a uh, parameter for a rule. Okay, so this has to do with um, the patch binding class over here. Uh, and that's the way to set it up. So we'll have, you know, when this starts up, it's going to register our patch binding modules uh, from common. Okay, so all these four are definitely important, uh, except for perhaps the validator because the validator is using uh, fluent validation so but again my project includes everything so I would not touch this uh, if I was you unless you know what you're doing so that's that so then what I did was I created a entity framework model um, project and this has my one table okay uh, and I have that and then over here in my controller again this is just sample code so I would not do all database operations within my controller just showing you we have now something called a patch customer object and if we go into the definition here um, this will inherit from our abstract patch state request class which is under the common folder and what this does is actually going to bind um, your patch customer class which is this one to your entity so my entity is customer and this is the entity framework class that is created uh, called customer which comes from my entity framework okay project um, and with this with this class is where, where I can update uh, my customer so in my constructor I'm going to map my fields okay by using this function called this this comes from my abstract patch state request so I will map um, first name to last name and email address one caveat here is you have to make sure that your property names here um, are gonna match exactly as they look in the database so first name capital F capital N if we look at the database right capital F capital N capital L capital N capital E capital A so make sure you have that uh, in place when you do this exam when you do the patching okay if not it's it's gonna give you weird behavior so it is case sensitive it is case sensitive so we go back to the controller okay so we have our patch customer class set up now pretty much everything is almost done so what we do is here I'm you know I'm using my data context for my entity framework uh, I get the customer that I want to update so I go to the entity framework I query the customer where customer ID is equal to 
customer coming in dot customer ID first or default okay and once I have that customer then that's easy easy peasy now I take the customer right and I call the patch function and pass it in my entity okay so what this is gonna do is it's gonna it's gonna create an update on just the necessary binded properties that are coming in I don't have to do any ifs I don't have to do any else's none of that checking for null so if I wanted a null out of field this will do it for me okay this will patch my entity and then once I'm ready to save it um, I just change the state to modified and then save the changes so let's look at an example okay so if I run this and for example um, let's change this to patch so let's say I want to change my customer first name to null okay so I send it okay so now coming in first name is null and you see if I if you look at this you see the properties that are bound right first name and customer ID customer ID is coming in from the um, from the URL um, and these these basically are kind of the two the one property that you should look at uh, when you're kind of debugging this so now if I trace through this I'm gonna get the customer right so now I have my customer from the database and now I want to do a patch okay I want to patch that customer so I want to do a patch so this is only gonna update the fields that are binded okay and once I do that then I modify my entity okay so if I look at the database now you will see that now first name is null nothing else got touched okay nothing else got touched uh, and it's pretty nifty right it's pretty nifty because now I can you know I don't have to do any if else I can pass in the fields that I want to update and not worry about any other fields that I don't want to update right because sometimes you may have to worry about other fields becoming null and all this and all that and then that's not going to happen with this okay so this uh, this is definitely helpful this is how I'm writing my my API's now using patch instead of doing some crappy logic with post or put uh, so hopefully you found this very helpful and if you like the video please comment give me a like um, always also if you want to seek me out on LinkedIn I'm also on LinkedIn Alex Louie uh, I'm on Twitter part-time adjunct um, anything that you have questions on let me know I am going to put this code on github I already have actually uh, and I'm going to provide the link on uh, the YouTube description so you can download it play with it um, take a look at how it lo how it works um, and then the next video I'll talk about validation uh, hopefully you enjoy it okay so always free never any ads part-time adjunct out